Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper in Corner. We have JY aka Jayun starting as the white Protoss. Bottom left hand corner we have Oblivion starting as the blue Zerg. This is on Polypoid. And at cross map positions, I am going to favor Jayun, aside from the fact that I think he is a strong favorite to take the tournament altogether. Him, Striker, Nesh, Whip, probably the top four contenders. I would be shocked if anybody else managed to get in the top four, actually. Those are they're just really, really strong players. But, aside from that, I'm actually also contractually obligated, contractually obligated to root for Jayun. And that is simply because uh, a good friend of mine, <laughs> I like seeing him do well. Anyway, so no offense to Oblivion, but my heart's with Jayun on this one. We'll see how he does. He's going to have his work cut out for him. Jayun in particular tends to be very, very good in PvZ because Zerg was his previous primary race. Overlord's making its way to the bottom right-hand corner, so he tends to know all of those off-timing off zealot maneuvers, Corsair harassment timings, everything. He really knows this matchup head to toe. Curious what Oblivion's going to have for him. In the meantime, looks like he's going to sneak with that probe out. Let's see if he sends out a second probe scout, because he's currently set up as though he wants to go for a forge expand, and oftentimes when you op open up with a forge expand, you're hoping to sneak out a nexus first, but you need to identify your opponent and make sure that they've gone for the 12 hatch or even overpool to be able to get away with it at cross map position well he might be able to pull it off regardless he's hanging out momentarily nope just gonna drop the forge <clears throat> rather than risk it and go for the delays looks like oblivion is in fact going for a 12 hatch so a bit of opportunity loss now he's sending out sending out that additional probe to know whether he can send out uh, where whether he needs to drop a cannon or not and upon moving in and seeing the hatchery we'll know that yep he's a-ok -okay to go ahead and drop that nexus bring that probe back from the north and immediately, oh, look at this. One cannon down, and from Oblivion's point of view, he does in fact see that pylon warping in, pulling drone, a drone off the line to go ahead and deal with this. But too late, Jayun's already sealed in. Forge is finished, which means he can start plopping down those cannons, which is going to deny this natural expansion. One way to deal with this is to just go ahead and cancel that hatchery and plop down a hatchery someplace out on the uh, someplace else like at the six o'clock at the nine o'clock something along those lines right now he's not pulling any probes or anything off the line to deal with it he's just going to go ahead and let that hatchery let those cannons finish it looks like and let the hatchery finish in the meantime it looks like yeah he's just going to take this drone to the top left corner build a hatchery there Jayun, once these two cannons are finished especially with the complete lack of pressure otherwise is probably just going to go ahead after this cannon warps in drop his nexus some drones now pulling off the line gonna drop sunken sunken's i believe range cannons so if he can drop enough of them we'll be able to take them out but this does cost a lot of economy early and so i believe with the i don't think he needs to morph these they, these can just absorb the shots and go ahead and let these two colonies finish some zerglings also pulling off the line to go ahead and engage it so it looks like there wasn't a hatchery top left the drone in the meantime sneaking in to go ahead and see that nexus drop so these two sunk colonies should finish that should be sufficient to deal with these cannons particularly if additional zergling support is fielded but this one sunk absolutely obliterating that cannon looks like the second one is going to finish but that was four drones and right now oblivion just sitting at seven drones overall so his economy battered to start things off Gateway in the meantime, morphing in. We also have that assimilator behind this. No gas as of yet for Oblivion, and he needs to cycle a lot of drones rather rapidly to get back in this match. And Jayun not holding up, he's gonna send an initial probe out just to see what the follow-up is. <clears throat> Very annoying to deal with. One thing for Oblivion though is he does have well weakened Sutton colonies. Looks like he's gonna kill his own Sutton colony there to clean up so he can mine the natural expansion at the very least. This, this pylon also gives a lot of scouting information on top of everything else. So it lets him know what the drone saturation is here at the natural. So now Zergling's going to go ahead and engage, take that pylon out. Duskator remains with the cannon, but Jane already off to a fast start has dropped that cybernetic score. And there's still no gas for Oblivion, so it's very likely as far as the follow-up and movements towards air control. Oh, and that Overlord taking damage on the front. Come on, get out of there, Overlord. So Jayun in firm control. He's got a huge worker lead. Oblivion basically just has to rebuild drones. The only way back in this match is to try to sneak this base here. Jayun 
has a probe nearby to potentially scout it. Looks like you could have actually potentially even denied it. So Oblivion going to drop that third hatch, but again, this gas is going to be very, very delayed. So grabbing gas at 507. And right now, if James on the, actually grabbing a second gas, if he's a little bit delayed because of uh, some pylon issues, but he's not that far off from being able to... Oh, what is this? So going for Dragoon range, is he just going to skip Stargate altogether? So being... I'm not sure if this is Merciful or Cutthroat, but he's going to go ahead and skip the Corsair, get Dragoon range, and maybe just go for one of those mid-game plus one weapons, basically just have overwhelming amounts of Dragoons before Oblivion really has anything to counter it. Looks like Oblivion is fielding a handful of Zerglings here and there to deal with what might have been potential Zealot pressure out on the map. And let's see if he just goes for three-hat Zergling. That would actually be a potential win condition if he just went straight three-hat Zergling, got Zergling speed maybe, and Jayun just went nothing but Dragoons. But the Dragoon on the front, going to kill this Overlord and just stack it on. That's going to put Oblivion in the red. Or I should say at least supply block him. And yeah, just the slew of gateways dropping. So Jayun not messing around. He's like, I don't even need Stargate. I'm not going to bother going that route. I'm just going to stack up a bunch of units and roll you over at this stage. I know I have such a strong economic lead that I can just more or less punish anything you send out there. Two Zealots and Dragoon to go ahead and engage two Zerglings. <clears throat> two Zerglings able to at least pocket through, taking damage. Yeah, they're at least going to survive another day, but plus one weapons is not that far off, and with just even a handful of Zealots and plus one weapons, it really negates Zergling's ability to engage. Nine o'clock base, building some Zerglings, and now let's see if he has just full Zergling production at this stage. Jayun might be making a slight misstep in building too many Dragoons to engage this, so the gas is mining. We do have that tech to layer. Enough Zerglings, so Zerglings trade pretty well against Dragoons, particularly when they have speed and are in large amounts, and Oblivion starting to sneak out on the map on a lot of different routes. These four Zerglings look like, yeah, are going to be able to get across that northern route. However, in insufficient numbers to really punch through and do damage there, these Zerglings going to go ahead and back out, but you got this stream to the south. Might be able to get on top of that cannon. There's only that single Dragoon to protect, so Jayun might need to pull some stuff offline to help defend this. These Dragoons, in the meantime, are going to march up to the 9 o'clock. A lot of Zerglings there to try to protect. Yeah, Drone's not pulling off the line. Sorry, Drone's Probe's pulling off the line to go ahead and engage the Zerglings. Plus one weapons is going to go ahead and finish. That doesn't translate. At least I don't think that translates to Probe. Yeah, you don't get plus one weapons on your Particle Beam. But with the single Zealot, six kills on that Zealot with plus one weapons. So with the Dragoon support, even a single Zealot be able to crush through this. But And yeah, with all the Zerglings expended at... James main. A Dragoon dies, but this still might be a sufficient attack force to just deal with what's left. So Oblivion continue to pump the Zerglings. More reinforcements making their way across the map. But this might just, despite, just, yeah, might have too much mass. Kind of GG right there. Firmly controlled by Jayun. We're going to move into game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.